I've been doing mechanical engineering for over a decade and completed undergrad at Boston University, then earned a master's degree from Tsinghua University, completing multiple internships, working with three different professors in their research labs, and developing some pretty cool products in the tech and commercial electronics industry, like the iPhone 15, automatic flush valves, and hand dryers. The creativity, the problem solving, the satisfaction of seeing something I designed come to life, those moments are are real and why I chose this path with zero regrets. But I also need to be honest with you guys. I've developed a problem with this field over these 12 or 13 years and it wasn't something I discovered overnight or anything. My problem is not with the discipline itself but what mechanical engineering is becoming and the direction it seems to be heading in. So what I'm about to share is not me trying to be negative and doesn't come from frustration but rather from deeply caring about the future of our profession and wanting the next generation of engineers to be better prepared than I was. So the goal of this video is for us to have an honest conversation about where mechanical engineering stands today based on my experience and how we can adapt, evolve, and stay relevant in a field that's rapidly changing. Let's start with education. Mechanical engineering programs are some of the most rigorous out there. They're thrown into fast-paced programs programs including classes like calculus, thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, material science, and design and manufacturing, often with very little guidance. In a way, that intensity is a good thing. It teaches us to think critically, push through ambiguity, and become comfortable with failure. But the issue is, in school, you're solving idealized problems with clear boundaries. In industry, every design is ambiguous, multidimensional, with a lot of moving parts, and the requirements are dynamic and and ever changing. The client or management changes their mind every other day. Procurement can't source the materials you specified. Manufacturing can't make the feature you designed. And you're not being graded, but instead evaluated by your managers based on a product's success or failure. This disconnect means a lot of young engineers walk into their first jobs completely unprepared. They know how to calculate stress on a beam, but not how to choose the right fastener or size of motor for a design. They can simulate a heat transfer problem, but not know how to run a design or FMEA review. This isn't their fault. Universities rarely update their curriculum, and the truth is many professors haven't worked in industry for years or a single day in their life. Internships definitely do help, but they're often too short or too superficial to give students the depth they really need. So even with experience, many still enter the workforce not fully prepared. The next big issue is how companies treat mechanical engineering. A lot of places don't actually understand what a mechanical engineer does. You'll see job postings asking for someone who knows CAD, FEA, CFD, robotics, control systems, Python, MATLAB, project management, and must be a great communicator and team player. This results in mechanical engineers getting hired into roles that are far too broad for a single person, or they get placed in positions where they're underutilized. In some startups or mid-sized companies, you might be the only directly responsible individual or mechanical engineer for for a project, not because you're ready, but because your company doesn't have the sufficient bandwidth and resources. One day you're designing in CAD, the next you're calling suppliers, running simulations, and troubleshooting builds. I'm speaking from personal experience here, and I'm not saying this is necessarily a bad thing, because I learned so much. I was responsible for every mechanical aspect of the product, but at times I was left without the necessary support or resources to do any of it properly. There might be no simulation tools, prototype budget, or manufacturing subject matter expert to bounce ideas off of. When the 3D printer breaks, it's also your job to fix it. It's a recipe for burnout if stress is not managed well and often is the result of poor resource planning or lack of understanding from management about what mechanical engineering really entails. On the opposite end of the spectrum in large companies, mechanical engineers often find themselves 
siloed, designing just one small component in a much larger system. You could spend months refining a single bracket, screw, or heat sink with very little visibility into the rest of the product. While you might think there's value in mastering that level of detail, it can feel demoralizing. You study for years learning thermal, fluids, mechanics, material science, systems design, then end up only tweaking the draft angle of a plastic enclosure day after day. This reflects a larger problem in the way mechanical engineering is structured in many organizations today. It's not that mechanical engineering is broken, but the way it's practiced often prevents engineers from doing their best work. Another concern I think is worth mentioning is how mechanical engineering work sometimes lacks visibility in cross-functional teams. Of course, this isn't true everywhere. It depends heavily on company culture, industry, and team dynamics. Mechanical engineering often happens behind the scenes. You might have fine-tuned tolerances, optimized cooling paths, and redesigned for DFMA. These contributions can be harder to explain unless the audience knows what to look for. Even a beautifully crafted CAD model might just get flipped through in a slide deck for a few seconds without anyone realizing how many design iterations went into it. So the value of your team's work isn't always obvious unless you or your boss actively advocates for it. In some companies, you might be expected to get everything right on the first try, even with vague or incomplete requirements. That pressure can lead to compromises in safety, reliability, and long-term maintainability. When something goes wrong, mechanical issues are often the most visible. Even if the root cause was a late spec change or upstream decisions outside the ME's control, the blame often still falls on mechanical because it's what people see and touch. Don't get me wrong, many teams and organizations do a great job of supporting and recognizing mechanical work. But depending on where you end up, especially in fast-paced startups, under-resourced teams, or companies without strong engineering processes, these breakdowns do happen. It's something to be mindful of so you're not thrown off guard. The last issue I'll mention that has become more and more apparent is that mechanical engineers often don't have a strategic voice in the direction of the product. You might be responsible for designing critical hardware, but you're not in the room when major product decisions are made early on. This problem likely applies to electrical and software engineers as well. That room is often filled with product managers, program leads, engineering and marketing VPs, the C-suite, amongst other stakeholders. They're the ones deciding what features matter, what form factor is feasible, what trade-offs are acceptable, and how fast the timeline should move. This potentially results in timelines that don't make sense or product specs that are physically unrealistic. I've been in situations where the VP of engineering or someone from marketing sets aggressive product specs like a super slim profile or tight thermal envelope because it looks sleek or matches a competitor. But they're not thinking how that impacts internal component layout, cooling, or structural integrity. Later on, when a mechanical engineering team raises concerns, it's often too late. The product vision is already sold to stakeholders, and now it's on us to somehow make it work. Maybe by cramming parts tighter, compromising airflow, or selecting a more expensive material. When issues come up during testing or manufacturing, mechanical gets questioned, even though we weren't in the room when the unrealistic constraints were set. I think most of the blame is on the system, but part of it is on us. Too often, we're so focused on being technical experts that we forget how to be effective communicators, collaborators, and decision makers. If we want to influence the product and not just execute the design, we need to learn how to speak the language of stakeholders. That means understanding cost, supply chain, customer needs, regulatory constraints, timelines, and risk. When we bring these things into our technical recommendations, people listen and we earn a seat at the table. Soft skills are not optional and they're engineering tools just like FEA or tolerance analysis. Now, before we continue, one of my favorite platforms that was instrumental in teaching me how to think and problem solve like a mechanical engineer was Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of visual interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Brilliant's lessons build problem solving skills by allowing you to play with concepts. This method is proven to be six times more effective than traditional 
lecture-based learning. Brilliance lessons are crafted by professors, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, and Google, so you learn from the best. Brilliant develops critical thinking through active learning, not memorization, so you become a better thinker. It also helps develop the habit of daily learning essential for both personal and professional growth. You can level up at home or on the go with Brilliant's interactive bite-sized lessons. One of my favorites is Brilliant's scientific thinking course that teaches you to think like an engineer as you design gear systems, bridges, electric and digital circuits, and more. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild, scan the QR code on screen, or click on the link in the description below. Brilliant's also given our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. Now, I know some of this might sound a bit discouraging, but that's not my goal. What I'm trying to get at is mechanical engineering is way more complex than it used to be, and we need to be more deliberate about how we navigate it. So let me share a few things that helped me and that helped other engineers adapt and thrive. Number one is don't just learn the engineering theory and tools. We need to build engineering judgment. Knowing how to design parts in SOLIDWORKS or run CAE simulations isn't enough if you don't understand the why behind a design. Study actual products and real world case studies like product recalls. Ask why did it fail? Why was that design better? When you see a field part or a clever design, pause and ask why did they make that choice and what are possible alternatives? Compare different solutions to the same problem. Look at how components and systems are designed across industries. Number two is learn how things are made. The more you know about manufacturing, the better your designs will be. Go visit the shop floor, talk to machinists, toolmakers, and manufacturing and process engineers. Learn what bottlenecks slow them down, what causes defects, what wastes time and money. Number three is don't wait for permission to get involved early. One thing I learned the hard way is that decisions get made way before a prototype or a CAD file exists. If you're only coming in after the industrial design is finalized and the product features are locked, you're too late to influence the things that matter the most. Try to insert yourself earlier on if possible. Sometimes it won't be possible for various reasons like company politics. Number four is make your work visible. It's ultimately up to you to make the value clear by showcasing your work to the right people and getting noticed. Don't assume other people will understand what you're doing just because it's important. That includes your manager and other stakeholders. Show how your work reduces cost, risk, or complexity. If you solved a major issue with thermal performance or assembly tolerances, bring it up in the review and tell the story. Remember, perceived value matters just as much as actual value. Number five is own your growth. No company, no degree, and no manager will ever hand you a complete education. You need to pursue it yourself. Chat with suppliers and test engineers. Learn why parts failed in the field. Get curious about adjacent domains and learn AI tools, automation, and whatever necessary to level up and maximize your value. The last and perhaps most important thing is give yourself some grace. Mechanical engineering is hard. It's filled with a plethora of constraints and parameters and is unforgiving of mistakes. If you're feeling overwhelmed, it's not because you're not smart enough. It's because the job is legitimately tough. Like most things, it gets much easier with experience and with the right mindset it will be deeply rewarding. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I talk about critical mistakes that even experienced mechanical engineers make. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.